everyone, it's Julia Mark here from RV Love and we are super excited to be coming to you today from one of our very favourite places in the country and that is Maine. Last time we were here was three and a half years ago when we filmed our 15 month on the road update. Right, and so now we're actually over five years of being full time on the road. And so we are here to do a recap on some of the best experiences, some of our biggest challenges, mistakes made, lessons learned, highlights, favorite places, lots of things that you guys have been asking about for a long time. And that's what this video is about. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're coming at you from Maine, specifically Kennebunk, Maine. And we're right on the coast. It's this gorgeous, rocky coast here in Maine. The water is beautiful. beautiful. The day is beautiful. And it's just really, I guess, just makes you really appreciate the life that we live. Yeah. Uh, this is one of our favorite places. For those of you that have been following us for a while now, we're in full time living, working, traveling from our RV for five years, a little over five years now. And uh, this is our second time to Maine. We've traveled to all 50 states in that time while still working. And boy, it has been one heck of a journey. Uh, pretty hard to condense five years of full-time living, working and traveling into one video, but we're going to give it our best shot. I know a lot of you guys have followed us for a while and watched a lot of our videos, read a lot of our blog posts over at rvlove.com. And uh, so, yeah, there's so much more to share. Yeah, I think a good way to do it would be to maybe just try and hit maybe five highlights and five lowlights, five mm -hmm. challenges, five lessons. and. Yep. Kind of, that was kind of a fun Keep thing. Keep the five theme going. Keep the five thing. Five years. So, uh, so let's jump right in. I'm sure you guys are going to have lots of questions as well. So uh, feel free to put those down in the comments below. We can always cover those in a future video. Now, when we filmed this video, there was so much content that it was too much for one video. So we've broken it up into two parts. In this first video, we're going to share our best decisions made and our biggest mistakes and regrets. So uh, we know you want us to get into the negatives and get into the challenges and the problems and the worst things and we are getting there but we're going to start off because you know that we're optimists and we're always positive people looking on the bright side of life even in the difficult times but we're going to start off with what are five of the best things that we've done in the last five years and I don't mean places that we've visited but just as in around the lifestyle. What are five of the best decisions do you think that we've made? Five of the best things that we've done? Well I think going back chronologically, I think we think back to where we first were starting this and that we were actually really thorough with our research before we even jumped into it. I think that's one right. of the best things we did was being well educated before jumping in. Yeah, we uh, for those of you that may not be aware, we decided to live this life in, I think it was October of 2013 and we spent about eight or nine months. We hit the road in June of 2014. We spent all of that time immersing, learning, reading, watching videos, RV shopping, yeah. talking to people really pretty intensely. I'd yeah, say, hundreds and hundreds period, of hours. Hundreds yeah. of hours. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that really paid off. It was a lot of work. I'm really glad we didn't rush it. Yeah. But it still felt like we were fast tracking it even because I think there was so much to do in selling a home and downsizing, shopping for the RV, getting our questions answered about you know, just actually life on the road. So we, we put a lot of time and energy into things before we put our money into it. And bef certainly before we d turn our lives upside down and change yeah. them in such a radical way. Uh, Which I think is a big part of this lifestyle is a lot of people diminish it to where you go, but it's right. actually, it's a huge life change if you're doing yeah. this, especially if you're doing full time like we did, where we sell everything, jump in boots and all. So all of that research and planning really did pay off and I think that's a big part of why after five years we're really still very happy and still very successful in this lifestyle and have no end in sight. Nope, no end in sight. Next decision that I'm really happy about was uh, our choice of coach. Being new and inexperienced RVers, we'd never done this before, except you had a pop-up and went travel trailering with your family growing up, but uh, this was new. Uh, we didn't know what we didn't know. Uh, we'd done a lot of research, but there was still, you know, we were still new. We were still ex inexperienced. Yeah. And we were really happy with our first choice of coach. Our Tiffin, a 2012 Tiffin, Allegro Open Road, a 36-foot gas motorhome. 
You know, I think the RV worked really well for us too because it was used and it was from an owner who had taken really good care of it mm -hmm. and we actually were even able to get an extended warranty from that first owner transferred right. to us which out which turned out to be a really good thing. Right we definitely put that to good use and and that gave us a lot of peace of mind as well I think being on the road as new RVers as inexperienced RVers and not knowing how reliable it was going to be it did end up being a really reliable coach. Um, good quality, good brand, not perfect of course, you know, we had our share of breakdowns and things that needed to be fixed, as is the case with any RV, any RV. whether you buy new or used or whatever age, whatever kind, um, that just goes with the territory. No RV is perfect and you will have issues and things will need to be fixed, but how much or how little depends on, you know, what you buy, how you buy and, you know, how handy you are as well. Not only was it a great coach, but the layout of that really suited us both working. Uh, Mark had a job still at the time. Yeah, I think one of the most important things about that layout is that it had an opportunity for me to convert the bunkhouse into a separate office that could mm -hmm. be a dedicated space for my office and that at the end of the day I could close that off because mm -hmm. at the time I was working for another employer mm -hmm. and I wanted to shut that off at the end of the day. And that was really important for your work-life balance. And for me working separately, um, I was creating RV Love at the time, so me working separate up the front of the coach, we really had separation of space in the RV. Ergonomic, comfortable workspaces that weren't taking over the dining area uh, was really important to both of us, and that turned out to be a great decision. And I think it's one of the reasons why we kept that RV for three and a half years, and it worked so well for us for all of that time. So now you're wondering, well, then why did we change? And we're getting to hey, that, the third uh, decision that we made that really paid off was buying our Thousand Trails Camping membership even before we hit the road yep. actually. We started out with that knowing that we were on a budget, wanting to be really savvy with our finances mm -hmm. and knowing that that was going to go a long way to helping us manage our expenses and our cost of living on the road. Yeah, and that absolutely rang true, not only that first year, but over all the years. I mean, our Thousand Trails Campground membership has saved us thousands of dollars over the years. Right. We started off with a zone pass, and then after about four months, I think it was, we didn't even go the full year of that membership when we upgraded to an elite membership. And we're not going to go into the detail of that here because this is a high-level video, but uh, we've written a ton about that on our blog over the last five years. We've got yeah. a ton of articles on our uh, website, new versus used versus resale, up grades, zone passes, I'm going to put a link to that down below so you can dive into that deeper but that's been a great choice. We've spent like five years and over 700 nights in the system now and it's saved us I don't know, tens of thousands of dollars. A lot. Of we should do the math on that. And so I'd say the fourth decision that we've been really happy with, which mm -hmm. is some people might think is counterintuitive when we we're talking about how happy we were with our first coach, but right. is our switch of our coach right. to the one we have currently, our CC. Yeah, a 1999 country coach intrigues a 40 foot, so it's bigger, we went from gas to diesel, it's still a class A, and we went much older from a 2012 to a 1999. That shocked a lot of people, including us, to be honest with you. But here's what's interesting, is that even though we've done so much research with our first RV, again, remember we were new and experienced RVs. Over the years, we continued to build on that learning and learnt more like actually living in our coach about what worked, what didn't, and what we wanted different in the next coach and remember we had changed in that time and our needs changed because you quit your job and, and again we covered in depth the reasons we made the change in our other blog posts and videos about that but having the confidence to go as old as we did 1999 a 20 year old coach and having the confidence to buy a coach of a brand that doesn't even exist anymore was a big thing but I think we really knew enough we'd learnt enough we'd researched enough to know that uh, what was important to yeah. us. And you know, and I would like to make the point though that even though we're super happy with that decision and it was the right decision for us at this time, right. it would not have been the right coach for us when we first started. Good point. Five years ago we wouldn't have done what we've done now. Uh, I think that would have been pretty scary actually, starting out as brand new RVers yeah. with a 20 year old coach not knowing anything about RVing. We would definitely not have had the confidence to be like drilling holes in the roof and no. cutting holes in the floor like we did we in our RV makeover. The, we wouldn't have had the time and the bandwidth to be able to spend the time on that renovation True. either because I had all the commitments from my other job. Right, and because we were new, we just wanted to get out there and travel. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to hit the road, go see the country and not spend time renovating, not spend the money renovating that had all of the things that we were looking for in some of the newer RVs yeah. but at a fraction of the price. Yeah and at the bottom of its depreciation curve mm -hmm. so it's a lower financial risk so it feels a really good decision for us. I think something that worked out really well which is partially due to a good dose of luck 
and partially because we really had done our homework and planned toward this for a while is um, really nailing the sale of the Tiffin and the purchase of the Country Coach. We nailed that, yeah. Yeah, because we sold the Tiffin at high retail privately um, at a substantially higher amount than we would have trading it in at a dealer. In fact, the difference between what we were offered as a trade and what we sold it for paid for CC. It can be tricky if you have financing on a coach, which we did yeah. with our Tiffin, to juggle that and to pull that off, but we did and uh, managed to buy CC at a really low price. And by the way, we didn't get any special uh, deals or anything like that with the dealer. We just negotiated really well because we'd done our homework, we knew what it was worth, and we had an inspection done, knew what the issues were, and we were able to highlight those to negotiate even more aggressively. So we did a good job with that. We High did. Five. And being an educated buyer goes a long way when you're purchasing. Yeah, literally pays. So our fifth decision that we're really happy with is making upgrades to our RVs. And that's both RVs, our first RV and our current RV, to truly make them our own and make them comfy. Some people debate on making upgrades to their RVs thinking it might negatively impact the resale value of it, mm -hmm. but this is our home, this is where we live, mm -hmm. and making it a really good environment for us is yeah. worth every bit of time and money expense that we yeah. put into it. Things like adding the sumo springs to improve the ride quality of yeah. the Tiffin was a great investment. As we said, the office spaces, we modified the dining area in the Tiffin, we replaced the mattress, and that's one of the best upgrades we've made. And of course, spending the money on doing our ultimate RV makeover, uh, to really make it our own, it turned out to be a really great investment. It didn't cost us that much when you look at the difference between what a co coach looked like before and what it looks like after. Um, we're going to put a link to the RV makeover series if you missed that. But, uh, but also things like improving our systems, like our inverter, our lithium batteries, our solos, just mm. completely changed the way we RV now and the way that we can RV. And so that, again, we're full time. And so the level of investment in the time and money that we're putting in, out, out into our coach uh, may be different and at a higher level than if you're like a weekend warrior or a part-timer, but yeah. And part of that is travel style too. Yeah, even if you are mm. a full-timer, if you predominantly spend time in a campground, you maybe don't need to spend as much time on being off-grid. So now we know this is what you really want to hear about is mistakes and regrets. So <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's start off with the first one. Gosh, yep, nobody's I think, perfect, including <laughs> us. This is something that we definitely did in our first year and I think a lot of new RVers are guilty of this as well. Mm. Traveling too far and too fast mm. initially. Yeah, that was we were definitely guilty of that too, especially since we were working full time. Yeah. Now, the travel pace we had, if we weren't working full, full 40 hour plus work weeks, that might have been a more reasonable travel pace, but mm. trying to mix that in, changing locations all the time, always being needed to be settled with good signal for work mm, right. and all that. And we were traveling, we were moving every three and four days for a yeah. couple months there, and I just got, got completely exhausted. Yeah, you, you're you, and you're excited, and you want to go out, and you want to travel and see things, and it's just you're like a kid in a candy store, and so mm. you know, I think. Uh, I think that's a pretty common thing that people do, but hey, you learn and then you adjust your schedule to what works best for you because it's travel pace is different for everyone. But I would say if you're working and especially if you have a family as well, traveling really fast can get stressful and tiring. So, and maybe we're just getting old too. Could <laughs> we be. just have to slow our travels down. <laughs> <laughs> the second point is weight issues. <laughs> yeah, because our first coach, you know, we knew that we were going to be mindful of weight and I wanted to be able to actually weigh everything before we took it into the motorhome. But here's the thing, we bought the RV and I was working from the motorhome the first week or so while Julie started moving us in and right, unsupervised, job. she just keeps on bringing everything in and she's like, it just keeps taking it. <laughs> so much storage oh. it was awesome but then Mark's getting stressed out because he didn't know what it all weighed anyway we did get the coach weighed we were overweight and then we did purging got rid of yeah. a lot of stuff and we, we did a video about that we'll put the link to that down below as well but uh, yeah, we were we were overweight but we weren't grossly overweight and I also made some improvements to the coach to be able to handle weight made some suspension upgrades with sumo springs I got better tires and mm -hmm. And just being mindful of how I Balancing. drive it, really being mindful in how I drive it, being very gentle with it, and even unhooking the car when we're on big grades. I was yeah. being really careful with it. But and, and we balanced the weight onto all four corners of the coach with a yeah. smart way. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, we did the best we could. We had a 22,000 pound chassis. I think that, you know, looking back, like we knew that that probably was 
We probably would have liked heavier, but that year that we wanted, it was a 22,000. Uh, we didn't know how much our stuff was going to weigh and how much that stuff really adds up, just even with, even with your food and your bodies and your clothes and all of that. And despite all the purging, it does add up. And it was hard to find information out there about how much your stuff was going to weigh. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think in hindsight, it would have been better to go up to the next year, which had a heavier chassis. We did make it work for the three years, but, you know, just coming up against that weight restriction did get old and did get tiring. It did get and, old. And that ended yeah. up being one of the reasons we wanted to make the change uh, to CC to our diesel motor home. Well, my third regret was probably not having a TPMS system from when we first started, a tire pressure monitoring system. Because I know I'm really big on tire safety and mm -hmm. so I was super diligent about every time I drove it and even sometimes mid-drive I would be checking the air pressures. And mm -hmm. I just recently got that tire pressure monitoring system and didn't realize just how much time and energy I had spent those previous four mm. plus years on monitoring tire pressure. And the things that can go wrong during a drive. So you yeah. might check the pressure at the beginning of a drive and everything's fine, but something can happen during a drive. Fortunately, that didn't happen. We didn't have any issues, mm. uh, but still the risk is there. And I think that's one thing that we've learned now that we do have the TPMS system. And Mark did a review on our TPMS system recently put another link to that down below uh, it's really been great and it's just taken a lot of anxiety off you that's something that I think we really just wish we'd had from day one before yeah. we even started out so and number four uh, I think trusting a RV GPS like it's <laughs> like it's meant to be gold or something because it's not I mean well, you, gotta, you still have to pay attention to signs RV GPS's are really beneficial and they will significantly reduce the mm -hmm the challenges you have with your route but they are not foolproof they we've right. had ours take us on the wrong routes multiple times so it's good to use mm -hmm. an alternate form of route trap route planning and also we even really like paper atlas to be able to get yeah. an idea where we want to go to it is still really important to have something that is rv specific that you can put those yeah. weights and heights and all that mm -hmm. in there because if you're trying to use a phone like that is you pretending it's a car you're going to end up with a whole lot more trouble like we were just mm -hmm. in the northeast here driving around and our rv gps was malfunctioning yep and so we're using a phone and you really have to be on it so you got to mm -hmm. watch the signs diligently because it's going to try and take you on roads that will not work yeah so taking the extra time to plan your route and not just rely on rv gps or a regular gps like google maps or other apps there are other apps out there too so you know good old-fashioned uh road atlas is fantastic and mountain directors we discovered those i think a couple of years in and they proved to be invaluable right especially if you have like a gas powered rv class mm -hmm. a or a truck and trailer combination that's near its limits on weight um, because it's not just climbing the hill the biggest factor for me is going down the hill and the braking and just mm. being safe because it's really stressful if you feel your brakes starting to fade and mm. you still have a long way to go down that hill so a mountain directories is a big part of being aware of what you're going to go and what to expect in your drive ahead so you can really ease peace of mind is big for that and i think the fifth you know mistake we made was taking on too much last year in particular we took on too many external projects that uh, really took us off track and we ended up suffering for that our channel ended up suffering our content you guys ultimately ended up suffering and that was a really tough year I would say last year was by far our toughest year ever uh, since we were on the yeah. road and I'd say that's our biggest regret I mean the other ones yeah, are definitely. pale in comparison to what that cost that was over everything our biggest regret overall but you know we live and you learn and we did learn some valuable lessons through that experience and you know like our work-life balance got off track which threw our health off track and threw our relationship off track and our general health and happiness off track and so we've been working really hard all year to just get that back so many of the things that we set out to do in this life that have kind of fallen by the wayside mm. and we haven't been doing as much of that driving, having fun, biking, hiking. So we're really focused on doing a lot more of that this year. And I think that lesson is not just for us, it's for everyone is to be clear on why you're getting into the lifestyle and mm. stay focused on that so that you are really living that life that you originally intended and don't mm. get too distracted by, you know, whether it's working too much mm -hmm. or traveling too fast a pace. but just being mindful of that and help increase your longevity and your joy in the lifestyle. 
And I think that really hit home for us actually exactly this time last year. It was the 4th of July weekend. Mm -hmm. We were in the third and final edit of our book manuscript for Living the RV Life and we were just getting it back to the publisher and as we read that third and final manuscript we realised, wow, who we are now and how we feel is so different to who we were and how we felt when we first started out writing that in January, right. February and by July realising, gosh, you know, we've really gotten off track with with who we are and what we're about and why we're doing this and that was really confronting when it we read very, that book and just mm. went wow how quickly things can change when you when you let things uh, drag you off track and so again that was a valuable lesson and um, yeah you'll be glad to know that uh, we've been reversing that trend to <laughs> get yeah. back to uh, what we love what we do and we're back to living and loving the RV life exactly that's been a journey in and of itself and it still is. Still is. Yeah. If you guys have any more questions, please put them down below. We'd love to answer them for you. Thank you for watching. And until next time, see you on the road. Coming up is part two, where we share five challenges and highlights from our five years on the road.